Hi, welcome to the Jeff and Jerry Show. My name is Jeff, I'm the borough manager of Mount Pleasant, and my co-host... Jerry Lachia, mayor of Mount Pleasant. Jerry, you, um, I didn't realize how you really follow girls softball. It's the best sport in the I, I know, <laughs> I mean, you have taken and uh, been to almost every game, I think? Uh, from the end of the season through the, you know, from the last few games they play, because the rainouts were killing you, yeah. and how you just yeah. put the team together and really went forward. Yeah. So what do you enjoy most about girls softball? Uh, I think their dedication. Uh, it's a true sport for them, isn't it? Right. And, they, and they play for the, the sport of it. Nothing. The leadership of the coach is... <laughs> oh, boy, he's, <laughs> yeah. boy, he's sucking up now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no free tickets, Jerry. No, no. But, let me tell you. Yeah, we don't charge admission. <laughs> <laughs> but as big as he is, I think they listen. <laughs> yeah, they do a little bit. They're good kids. They sure are. Yeah. I, I never saw, I mean, any of the teams that I've watched throughout the years uh, basketball, football, track, whatever. I never saw a team that was together as, as this team was. Well, we're going to talk to the team today because today our guests are the um, PIAA Girls High State School Girls Champions. State Championship team. And they're from Mount Pleasant. And um, this is actually the third one in... Second, 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 second one. Second one in three one. years, is that right? Five years. Five years. 2017. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and today we usually do the team when we when we talk, but today the coach is here. Uh -huh. So, uh, coach, why don't you let everybody know who, what your name is? Uh, my name's Chris Brunson. I live here in the township, um, out towards Kecksburg, and um, you know I've been here for three years uh, as the coach. Uh, 2019. Uh, and then 2020 we lost, and then this year um, I was a former college coach um, at Cal U baseball for 14 years. Um, you know I have my own business with subways and things, and uh, these girls keep me busy with uh, you know practicing and playing. Well, you told us a little bit about your background, yeah. but, but you were born in Kecksburg. No, I'm I'm originally from Hempfield. I okay. went to uh, I went to Hempfield, graduated in. Uh, a while ago. <laughs> we all have. Yeah, 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 a while ago. Um, and, um, you know, from like New Stanton, Youngwood area, yeah. And your parents, what, what did your parents do? Uh, well, uh, not so good of an upbringing. We'll, we'll just go with that. Um, okay. Yeah. So you have brothers and sisters? I do. I have uh, three half-sisters, um, same dad, different moms. Um, and one is in town uh, with Nimi's Boutique, as Jillian. And um, you know, I have Carrie. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I have Carrie and oh, we know Jillian. Carrie and Stacy are out. Uh, they live out by us, uh, out on Poker Road. Okay. Yeah, we we did many. We did a couple we of shows. Did a show with her. Yeah. Yeah. She's doing well. Yeah, I think. she is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she finished her. Uh, she graduated from nursing school, and she's doing the nursing full time, and um, you know, still doing the boutique in town. Now, did I hear you say you own Subway? I do. Yeah, yeah. I have the one at Mount Pleasant Walmart. Um, and then we have a, a few, my brother-in-law and I are partners, and we have a few in the, in the county. So you do like the other national chains do when your team hits a home run, uh, everybody gets a free subway. Uh, uh, well, I, I donate some free. Can we start that? <laughs> we, we, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't, we, we, we do our share of donating. For us. Yeah, yeah, we do. We Coach, you are the athletic director. I am, yeah. This is my, uh, uh, this is, I'm completing my second year. Um, I just signed on to do another two years. Um, I really enjoy uh, the interaction with the kids. You well, know, that's the, cool. oh, I the, every, the everyday stuff. Um, you know, just maybe you feel like you have a little part in helping that kid along their journey. Mm -hmm. Now, you came from Cal U, you said. Yes. And you were the baseball coach. I was assistant baseball coach, yeah. Okay. Big difference between Cal U baseball and Mount Pleasant girls softball? Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a big difference. Um, but I put a lot of time into the softball, too. Um, I try to do it. You know, a little bit like college, but not the whole thing. I mean, we do offer, you know, weights, and we stay on the girls about their grades, and um, you know, we just generally try to help them, you know, become better people. So. so when you're when you're when you have a team in college and you have a team in high school, um, is it hard? I, I would I would think it's harder to keep track of the college players than it is the high school. It players. is. Um, I made my living for 
a while uh, chasing 18 to 21 year old yeah. boys around <laughs> and, uh, try, trying to make sure that yeah. they're doing what they're supposed to do um, but really it just starts with setting an example um, you know holding the kids accountable you know having rules and holding them accountable um, and, and it just snowballs you know the, the, the bad kids weed themselves out they want to go do something else they don't they don't want to jump on the train and go so you are you at the school facilities all day long I am not no I'm kind of in and out I'm technically part-time part-time AD that's I know that's a little different but yeah um, it is. <laughs> it's it very is. different um, but it works you know mr. Gumbita is uh, very good with um, you know allowing me to do my work and then getting the stuff done for the school and covering events and it's it's a lifestyle it is a lifestyle and I, and I really enjoy it what's harder being an athletic director or being a coach uh, athletic director or coach I would say athletic director just because you're getting you're getting shots from different angles you know with the girls um, you know they're the same people every day you know and you know the parents and things that you know you you know, fortunately, I have kids on the team, so we've grown up with these people, and you know, you know, you know what you're getting into with that. But with the AD thing, you're di you're talking about different um, different sports. So you know, I'm learning this family, or I'm learning that family, yeah. or hey, we live in Shaft, or we live over in town, and and everybody wants to. Everybody's been very welcoming. To, you know, they're very friendly. They want to. They just want to know a little bit about you. You know, mm -hmm. that's kind of. I think that's what makes Mount Pleasant unique. Not to go off, maybe not unique, but makes it good is you know, that small town feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, you took over a team that had won an, uh, a state championship yes. before. So, uh, have you seen a, um, as, as each year you have a different team, right? Yeah, Pretty absolutely. Much. Um, not like the pros or professionals, right. because, it, so, do you kind of look ahead and see what kind of team you have coming up? Yeah, we do. Um, I think we, I've learned this a while in college. You don't ever really kind of replace the kid or the player. You just try to replace the numbers, and you figure out where I can get you know a 300 average or a couple home runs. You try to figure out how you're going to replace those numbers. Um, you never replace the kids because they're all special. They're all unique. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think we're going to be very good moving forward. You know, this this group here with the seniors was a special group. Um, you know, they. They had dedicated themselves early, you know, in the process with wanting to go to college and trying to play in college, and it just really snowballed through, you know, and it, you see the benefits of that, you know, through through. I mean, watching the games, I mean, they they were good. They're athletic. They were good. Yes. They're athletic. They're athletic. Yes. Do you do you promote the girls to play other sports? Yes, absolutely. Um, I know, uh, Courtney. I'm just going to go down the line here sure. just because they're here. Um, Courtney had an injury with soccer, but she was also a soccer player. So she kind of was working through some injuries, but she did a couple sports. Mary was a two-sport kid. She was an all-section tennis kid, right? Mm -hmm. All First team, all-section. I mean, our tennis team won the section this year. Uh, they were undefeated in the regular season, won the first couple rounds of Whitfields. And then you kind of you kind of run into kids that, like these girls, like their passion is tennis, so they kind of just, you know, they they knock you off. Right. Um, and then she played the three sports. She played uh, doubles tennis and uh, basketball and then softball. So, yeah, I, I really promote it. Um, I think it helps kids learn a uh, pecking order. You know, if you're always like these girls are, if they're always this kid in their, in their number one sport, if they do another sport, maybe they'll be the bottom kid, and then they'll learn how to work and just kind of pick a couple kids off to get into that starting lineup. Makes them a better all-around athlete. Yes, I absolutely. Think I think mentally it helps with some adversity and things and learning how to compete not only against another team but within, with on your own roster. You know, do it the right way, not the caddy stuff, you yeah. know, but the just learning how to compete and be, you know, just the best teammate that you can be and, and just work towards that team goal. Do you think it keeps them fresh? Because instead of being softball, Right. 24-7, 365 days a year, they can actually get a little bit of a yeah. break. And well, I can speak for my own. I, I don't know. They can speak for themselves, but um, I think it does keep you fresh because I think mentally it just gives you a break. Yeah. I, don't, I think the kids can handle the physical part all year round because they're just, they train for it. They're, I mean, that's their passion. But I think mentally it, it helps them kind of just take a breath, you know, and like I said, when sometimes when you're not the kid all the time that is leaned on to be the main person, you know, you learn how to be a supporting role player, and it's just nice to kind of have a little bit of that pressure off. Who who gets the girls to come out and play? Is is the program established where girls want to play, or does the girls here 
help recruit their friends and say you should play softball with us? Um, like I think here at Mount Pleasant, I think it's something that starts really early. Um, you know, within the rec fast pitch and those, you know, you get into travel and then you find out what she's doing or she's doing or she's doing and then some of the younger parents will look at, oh, well, what's Mary doing? How, how did she get to where she is? And then they figure out their path, you know. Um, and then it's just different levels of family commitment. Um, the things that these girls do, I mean, they go all over the country to play, literally all over the country, you know, uh, California, Florida, Georgia, all that stuff. Um, like I said, it's just a, it, it was a special group with just the family commitment. Mm -hmm. And not everybody can do that, and that's okay. But, and we have girls that don't do that, and they're good players too. Um, but it, it just, it really helps, you know, it just, it breeds competition, breeds competition. And that's what makes it, you know, ascend. Now, I have known uh, other people who have coached, whether it was cheerleaders or girls softball, and, and every, every team has its um, drama. Yeah. So um, the ones that I know seem to think that the girls have a little bit more drama <laughs> than maybe the boys team. So, how, <laughs> so how, as, a, as a coach that's a male, yeah. how do you, do you know how, to, how you decide yeah. you were going to handle that? Um, well, it helps having three daughters, obviously. Well, I, that's, I, your, that's your I, team I, right there. Yeah, yeah, well, it helps having three daughters. <laughs> you can build and, a team. You know, early on, you know, I talked about, you know, creating boundaries, uh, rules and things, and just kind of letting you guys know, you know, mm -hmm. what's tolerated, what's not. Um, these girls have done an absolutely amazing job at the two hours that we are together, or two and a half or whatever practice is, just being a teammate. You know, there, there were girls that didn't like each other girls. It, and you didn't see any of that stuff because they were mature enough to handle it. Um, and it, it's a testament to these these girls and their friends. The leadership. You know, that the leadership that we had. Like, it's just kind of like, we don't do that here. We don't do that here. This is all about the team and what the team goals are. And, you know, and I know there's jealousy and there's things that just naturally happen. But they did an amazing job of just keeping it away. So just they pushing made the it job away. easier. Absolutely. Probably, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I you know, you hear horror stories from other coaches and yeah. male coaches that coach females and yeah and, and there's drama on boys' teams too. Yeah, there, there is, there's, there is. There's uh there's there's some interesting uh, things that go on there too. Um but they they did it. They were just amazing at the leadership of the team. Um, you know, the role players understanding their roles. Um, and they police them themselves. You know, like, hey, we don't we don't we just don't do that. Like we don't do that stuff. So um, it was just it, that was the difference I think in this group than maybe another group was they took ownership in it and they really wanted it and um, you know they just they did it they did the heavy lifting you know they, they policed the group it's a long season how did you keep it motivated um, or did they, do they motivate themselves well, I beat him with bats. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I beat him with bats. I beat him over the head with bats. So the next yeah, right? yeah. So, yeah. Again, it, it, it's a testament to the leadership of the team. Um, they uh, they decided as young young ladies that they were going to make a run at this thing, and maybe it was going to work out, maybe it wasn't. Um, you know, but just this this senior class did that, and then our juniors, and then our sophomores who didn't really get a freshman year because we didn't have the COVID thing. And a lot of that was their, these two younger sisters. You know, they were part of that sophomore group that got a chance to play. And, and then we had freshmen that just kind of were like, oh, wow, you know. And they learned, you know, hey, this is how we do things, you know, so. How early in the season do you know you have a special team that you have a um, chance to, to do really well? How, 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 when do you Well, with that? this group, we thought we had it probably in eighth grade. You know, when- Is that Mr. right? Yeah, when Mr. Hutter was the, the, the head coach. And, um, you know, they lost one game in two years in, in junior high ball. And um, it, it, we knew we had a special group. Um, you, then you just try to find a couple extra pieces to kind of fill in, you know. And, um, you know, but like I said, it was just we, we knew early on. I think this year, um, I think when we kind of had the meeting and talked about adversity um, mm -hmm. in April, um, I kind of gave them a timeline of how, what is it going to take to finish this thing. Um, I think when you set hard goals like, hey, June 18th is the state championship game. Are you guys all the way in until then, or are you just going to kind of go through the motions? Uh, they promised me that they were in all the way through, um, and I told them we were going to have adversity, which 
we didn't have a whole lot of adversity in the playoffs because she kept shutting people out. I know. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but we still had it. Yeah, you made it easy. <laughs> I'm pulling my hair out of the bucket, but uh, it's, um, you know, it, 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 incredible run. I'm not her. sure they need a coach. coach. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, well, an, out, an outsider looking in, maybe, maybe they say that, but I think the girls would beg to differ. No. Who is yeah. your staff coach? Uh, Mr. Hutter. Um, he's a teacher here in the building. Um, he's a lifelong Mount Pleasant person. The Hutter's farm over there. You guys all know that. And his daughter. Uh, Katie. Katie. She's a junior. Yeah, she yeah. played center. Um, and uh, Ken Swank. Um, he lives over by Lennox, on the other side of Lennox, over there somewhere, mm -hmm. and uh, his daughter's also a junior. He was, in, he was an integral in the fast pitch program for a while, um, and then he kind of got out, and then you kind of turn it over to the next group, you know, that's coming up. So, yeah. um, and that's kind of where our junior high coaches are. Our junior high coaches are very integral in the fast pitch rec program, um, and I think that's kind of how you'd have to do it. You got to kind of get you got to identify who's really serious about this, and you got to kind of get them involved. You know, you don't have to give them the free reins, but you got to get them involved. And you know, I think it just kind of builds momentum. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it. How hard is it to transition from a slow pitch player to a fast pitch player? Um, <laughs> ask Courtney. <laughs> Courtney, how hard yeah, is ask it Courtney. <laughs> it's it's difficult. Like you get the basis of softball, learning all the rules and stuff, and like the fielding's pretty much the same. Fast pitch is definitely it's faster, and just like the speed of the game. But pitching, that's probably the hardest adjustment because you go from seeing a 20 foot arc to a ball coming straight at you, and okay. so that's definitely the hardest part. But like I went, I played slow pitch until I was like 10, and then I transferred over to fast pitch. And it was definitely an adjustment as them, like trying to hit yeah. the wall. It was yeah. tough. It was tough. It yeah. was tough. You she worked hard. Quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She yeah. Worked, no, she it took hard. Just me. Yeah. It, it was rough yeah. for a little bit. I don't think slow pitch girls hit balls 300 yards. So. Yeah. Well, um, but I think I would echo the same thing. I think the hardest thing is learning to hit, yeah. you know, to hit fast pitch. Um, and it's it, it, it's a transition. It, it it takes a lot of work, but kids can do it. You know, if, if it's a serious kid that really wants it, and they're going to put in the reps and listen a little bit about you know some different technique, and um, I think they can transition. We've um, I think through junior high we've had some kids that yeah. have mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. you know came over. Um, you know, I don't know. I think I think Haley did one year a, a one year a slow pitch when you were like six or something. Yeah. We just moved the area, and hey, there's the slope. It sounds like shuffle. a good, yeah. good time, you know, and it was. <laughs> it was good, but um, and I think you did baseball and something else, and then mm -hmm. we went into travel ball real thick, so with uh, things. And I don't know, Mary, what was your story with? Uh, yeah, I played slow pitch for a few years. I started when I was like five, played for maybe like three years, and then I hopped on over to the uh, uh, fast pitch program, and for Mount Pleasant, and I played that for a few years, and then when I was like 10 years old, I started playing for uh, Nitro, starting mm -hmm. some uh, mm -hmm. travel teams, and yeah, my parents heard from uh, here and there that, hey, you should probably start on the travel program if she has any future in softball. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, definitely thankful well, for that. Well, the competition's probably a lot tougher yeah. in travel. Yeah, yeah. Because yes. you got the well, shoulders from all Yeah, and there's different levels of travel. You start yeah. out around, you know, about an hour radius, and yeah. then you get on a team maybe that goes about three hours, and then you stay in that group for a while. And then the girls that want to go to college and play, you got to go five, six, seven, eight hours, plane rides, crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Yes. You know, if you want to play at that highest level, you know, and not all kids want to. They want to have a great high school experience, and we try to accommodate that as well, yeah. you know, with a lot of the girls. What's the biggest thing you learned this year? Being the, uh, being the coach of Ooh, these, what's the biggest thing you learned? Biggest thing I learned this year, um, I think even just, you know, coming from college, and I think what I really learned is all the non-bats and balls and practice stuff that they have to have together to make something special. Um, we talked about it, you know, you, you talk about it, but to see the girls like take ownership in what we're doing and not have to be on them, really, you know. Um, I, I think, you know, like I said, I've been on other winning teams. We've won conference championships in college and things. But, and, and, and you think about that, but I think really the difference was um, them dealing with the adversity, you know, in their groups. And um, I think that's the biggest thing I learned is it's just not all about the two hours of practice time. It's, it's about mentally getting them more prepared than maybe they understand they need to be prepared, you know. Um, I think that was what I learned the most. Is every team, is there a big difference between every team? I think every team is different, yeah. I think 
even just one player, you know, if one player graduates, or I think every team is its own self. Um, you know, that's why it's so hard to repeat. Like people talk about repeat and all that stuff. Uh, even just taking one player off, and it, it it doesn't even have to be you know the star or the big time pitcher or whatever. Um, I think it just one player it just changes the group dynamic, and then you have to create another new group dynamic, and you don't know how that's going to turn out. Any good stories from the um, from the season that you want to share? Well, today? let them share. You got any well, good I stories? Oh, <laughs> We're going to get I them. Want, I want to hear okay. Any good uh, story that you have? Uh, it could be anything. Man, there's so many. Um, I don't know. State champ. I'll, I'll state championship game. Um, you know, we're we're in a situation where I could have bunted her. And, uh, you know, I think, this might I, be my favorite. <laughs> I, 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 we're gonna hear your side yeah. later. We're gonna say his side uh, first. State championship game. Uh, it's a bunny. It, it's a possible bunting situation. But Courtney is our four hitter, and she can hit the ball about two miles. And um, you know, two miles. Well, <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. About yeah, that. Well, with a tailwind, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> tailwind might help me. That's a good story too. But, um, you know, we're, she's on deck, and there was a stoppage in play, and whatever. And I walked up to her, and she kind of looked at me like, "Are you going to give me the bunt sign or whatever?" And I said, "No, donkeys don't bunt." <laughs> yeah, so, donkeys don't bunt. Yeah, and she can tell you about the well, we're gonna talk the, do about the donkey stuff. Uh, we we call her the big donkey. So, um, I don't even know where that really came from. <laughs> I just made it up. I it just, it just it stuck. It yeah, it just stuck. We were on the bus one day, and I was yeah. like, oh, now she's donkey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was the donkey. Donkeys so. have a great personality. <laughs> they're nice and strong. Uh -huh. You know, and that's, that's the donkey. They're hard workers. Yeah, they're hard workers, <laughs> and they got great personality, and they're, they're cute little things. Yeah. Know? I, and, uh, I can see how you got yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I went over to her, and I gave her about as mean faced as I could, and I gave her a Donkeys don't bunt. <laughs> it was I, so you know, funny. I, did, yeah. that, was that the time you singled? I think it might I had a single. Yeah, yeah, she singled up the middle, and the girl wound up coming around, and we scored. So it worked out. But yeah. um, that's a situation that you could have bunted. And uh, I just wanted her to know that I had confidence in her to, to get it done. During the game, did you feel like you, you had it won? Uh, well, it's funny. Um, I just watched a replay of the game yesterday, and I'm sitting on the couch. My wife was watching it, and I'm sitting there like this. And she's like, well, what? yeah, I like, we still win, right? <laughs> we, were down, we were down by like, we were down too early, and I'm, I'm mad at Katie because she took a bad route in the outfield, and the ball got to the wall, and I'm like, the number one, the number one thing in outfield play is the ball never gets to the wall. What are you doing? You know, and I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, I'm like, oh, you know, and then, uh, you know, things started to unwind in our, in our favor, and I, I got a little more relaxed, you know, and then at the end of the game, we, you know, watching these girls, you know, smiles and things, and and uh, we still laugh about her being on the bottom of the pile, and giggling because yeah. she can't <laughs> breathe, just laughing yeah. hysterically because she can't breathe, and uh, yeah. So uh, you you coach these girls, yeah. So so they look to you for inspiration yeah. and for help. Who who gives you your inspiration and help? Uh, well, I do a lot of who prayer. Do you go to? I do a lot of prayer. Um, I pray a lot. Um, you know, I pray for our kids. I pray for the health of their kids, just the overall experience. Um, you know, I, I would just say God. You know, God, you know, my Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, and that's who I draw from. So. Amen. Yeah, yep. for sure. Amen. Like well, I think yeah. it's working out well yeah. for you. So yes. Far. Yep. You sure shine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Now, you don't make, let's say you can't, you don't repeat. And we know that you okay. are going to, but let's say you can't. <laughs> well. But, but, um. I'm sure you draw a good thing out of each season, even if you don't win the yeah. championship, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, we talk about creating a, a good environment. Mm -hmm. We talk about creating good people. You know, helping create good people. And I think if we continue to do that, I think every season is a, a success. Um, you know, and you might not always win section championships, and you might be 500, and who knows? You know, and um, but I think as long as the girls are having a good experience, they're getting better. Um, you know, and they're they're achieving their goals. Um, you know, I, I I mean, you you guys know me. I'm not a big like, hey, look at me, we're state champion. That's just not me. Mm -hmm. Like I was a, you know, they're handed me the trophy, and I'm like, give it to the girls, give it to the girls. You know, I I want them to be on stage. You know, um, so every team's a little different. You know, and I think we have some talent. And, and Mr. Hutter and I and Ken, we talked about some teams that we got past. And what kind of talent did they have? And how, when did we, you know, and I think we have those, that kind of talent coming back. You know, oh, with a couple, couple of the younger kids that step up. And 
um, you know. So. Okay. You led the way in the playoffs. I mean, from the beginning of the playoffs yeah. to the championship. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, you you went up against some good teams. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that yeah. they couldn't hit nothing. Yeah, well, Mary. like I said, she yeah. she had, uh, had <laughs> she saved all our good ones for the end. Yeah. You know, Mary, I, I guess I did. I got to tell you, when the first inning of the championship game, when you gave up two runs was the first inning, mm -hmm. and you come off the field. You had a look on your face like, "Don't talk to me," yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just—I mean. You had your composure. You went out the next inning, and you had composure the rest of the way out. Yeah. She was so calm. Yeah. She was cool. yeah. calm and collective for sure. After that inning, I was sitting there in the dugout. I was having this conversation with God. I um, I think he, I, I talked to him like he's my my next door neighbor. Uh, um, <laughs> and um, he's probably annoyed of me. I talked to him all the time, and I'm like, God, I don't know any other team that works as hard as us that deserves us any more than we do. That's I was right. like, I know we're going to win. I can see, I said, I can picture that gold medal around our neck right now. Mm -hmm. It's like, we deserve this. So I just, I was calm. It's so weird. And in, in times of struggle like that, this weird newfound calmness that I obtained. I wish I would have took calm. a picture of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I warned the girls of practice a couple, you know, the day before or whatever. I said, look, we're going to give up runs. I mean, it's a state championship game. We're going to give up runs. <laughs> like, how you deal with that is going to be decided <coughs> if we move forward and get the gold medals or we don't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they did it. You know, they, they kept their composure. I was like, we took their first shot. They took the big shot. You know, they had the crowd going, and the, girl, the big girl was on the mound. She was throwing gas, and she got us the first inning. You know, Kate, I, I got Katie thrown out, and uh, they had all the momentum. And then, uh, you know, it just gradually, hey, girls, it's going to be okay. Just calm down. Just continue to chip and fight and have good at-bats. And, you know, we got through. That was a good speech because the crowd, after the first inning, didn't say too Yeah, they were, they were a little lower, yeah. <laughs> they were yeah. quiet. Yeah, yeah. Talking about the crowd, their crowd, yeah. crazy. Oh, yeah, they, they yeah. Were. yeah, I, yeah. I, it they still amazes me to this day that they all had those matching T-shirts. Yeah. The organization yeah. had to be yeah. crazy. They had yeah, so many we'll, fans. We'll have to get Mount Pleasant to do that next time. <laughs> well, maybe, I hope. Yeah, hopefully it's next year. Yeah, 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 yeah who knows? that was crazy. Hey, we have a couple minutes left with you, and yeah. I have one uh, one final question, and then we're gonna uh, go into the girls for the next awesome. segment of the show. Awesome. Um, we just mentioned speeches. Yeah. Do you go into the, into the game with a certain motivational speech, or does it just come off the top of your head how you feel or how the game's going? How do you give that mo motivational speech? Uh, you, you just kind of read the situation. A uh, before, uh, before speech, I, I've kind of learned with girls, uh, the less you say, maybe the better, yeah. especially kind of the male authority figure. Um, you know, they... Uh, maybe they think it's their dad and they want to knock them out or something, but um, I just leave them alone. Um, before, the, you know, we do all the preparation and practice. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about mental preparation and things, and I just trust that they're going to do it. And, um, you know, before the game, there's no Newt Rockney speech or anything like that. You know, I, I ask them to get ready, uh, mentally prepare what they need to do for that day. Um, you know, and, and we try to do it in practice. So when we get to the game, we just kind of put it on autopilot and do our thing. So that, that's kind of my approach. Uh, as far as drawing, I, I think, like I said, I pray a lot, um, you know, and things will come to me just like, hey, I think I need to hit on this topic or I need to talk about that. So. Yeah. Okay, real quick question, yeah. and then we're done yeah. with you. Um, the, um, oh, is, it, is the game more physical or mental when you win a championship? What do you guys think? Mental. I mental. think it's mental. I think it's I think, yeah. I I think, think every it. single game is mental. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. No, these girls are, you know, higher end caliber athletes. They're all going to college to play softball. Um, I think maybe someone would argue that, you know, it's physical for maybe, you know, a lower talented kid or whatever. Um, but I think when you're dealing with higher end athletes, I think it's all mental. Okay. Sure. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show, uh, the first part of the show, because we're going to do a, a second part coming up here soon. Coach, any last word? We have a minute left. I just thank, uh, you know, the community for their support, the administration, um, you know, for trusting in me and these guys' parents for trusting in me, you know, the coaching their kids. And, uh, you know, this year it, all, it was a fairy tale. You know, it was a fairy tale experience. 
um, you know, from you know the, the mayor stopping traffic in the middle of the town and getting off the bus and <laughs> all that stuff. And thank those you. are things that we will never forget as a family, as a softball family. And I can't thank you guys enough. Well, I'm sure the memories will always oh, carry yeah. forward. Oh yeah. Yes. Okay, girls, it's now your turn. Boy. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> So let's let's let the girls introduce themselves one more time. So, you, can we start? All right. I'm Courtney Polich. I played first base this year. I just graduated. All of us just graduated. I plan on going to Liberty University to play softball, and I'm gonna major in exercise science. So, yeah. I'm Mary Smithnowski. I was a starting pitcher this year, um, also a senior, and I'm going to Western Michigan University on a softball scholarship. Um, probably going to major somewhere in communications. I'm Haley Brunson. I played third base this year, and so I dislocated my finger, and then I played second base. <laughs> <laughs> I will be attending the University of Pittsburgh next year to play softball, and I'm going to be going in undecided. So, for those who didn't catch the first part of the show, this is your father, right? Yes. How's it like playing for your father? Uh, I think there's good and bad to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I hear both sides, I can hear both sides. Um, we'll pretend like he's not here. The good, I love playing for my dad. It's some of the memories that we've shared playing together, um, having him coach, look down at third base line while I'm up to bat. It's, it's incredible. Like To be able to share this state championship with him is pretty awesome. Now on the bad side, <laughs> um, I think... For a lot of dads, they're harder on their kids. I so, think so. Um, I, I would do something little, like make a mistake or something. I can just see, like, the, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're better than this. <laughs> Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it, was, it was fun playing for him this year. Now you have a sister coming up, right? I played with my sister this year. She was a sophomore. And then I have another younger sister coming up to seventh grade to play softball. Well, that's great. And now you're going to move on, and you don't have to look at your father and <laughs> your poor two sisters. <laughs> um, yeah, my, my uh, younger sister that's in 10th grade going into 11th, um, I pray that she has a good time with... Uh, my she, dad. She will. Coach in. <laughs> Hopefully they don't butt heads too much. <laughs> she I'm, that type. Is she a head butter? Yeah. Oh. yeah <laughs> with, with me a little bit. Hey, coach, come on. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes my dad just has to turn around and pretend like he's not there at third base while she's up to bat. Right. So. <laughs> uh, you'll get it together. <laughs> How did you just look at your parents? Well, and when did you just uh, it was the first state game, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was playing third base. We were playing on a pretty dry, hard field, and we were hitting warm up ground balls. He was hitting us warm up ground balls, and normally he does like a round of like pretty easy ground balls, and then he starts like hitting them pretty hard, get us game ready, and. All I remember is he threw up the ball and smashed one at me, and it came up, hit, took a bad hop, and hit my middle finger, and my top joint came up, and my finger went back like that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and at first, I thought, like, I just hit my hand, like, it stung until I looked down, yeah. and it's, like, back like this, and I, like, I freaked out. I was like, it's broken, it's broken, so I went over to the trainer. And Allison popped my finger back into place, but I couldn't watch because I was too tense. She couldn't do it unless I like looked away. So she popped it back in, but I just taped it up and uh, DH'd that game. <laughs> so, so you could have so bad. Yeah, well, kind of, but I mean, I had these two fingers taped up, so I, was, I only had like one other finger on this hand on the bat, so I was basically hitting one-handed. One <laughs> but I mean, I did what I could. <laughs> So moving from third to second, the the, uh, the ground balls just aren't as hard to hit. That's why you were able to make the switch. Yeah, and it's a shorter throw to first. Take yeah. some of the angled throws and stuff from third base, I wouldn't be able to do with my finger. So. Is he and your coach 24-7? Um, is, is at home, is he can do little things? He, he gives me some time off. I think I'm pretty self-motivated, but anytime I ever want to go out, we have a batting cage at our house. So anytime I want to go out and hit or practice softball, he's always there to help me out. 
So on the field, I bet you he's, he's co you, you look at him as not your father, but as the coach. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. And except for times like when we win state championships, I'm glad it's my dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Mary, you are, um, you are you, do you feel you're the leader being the pitcher of the team? Um, I don't take. Yeah, sure I don't team. personally take the title as leader because I think we have multiple leaders in the team, and I don't think just one person stands out. I think we stand out better as a group because I think multiple voices are better than just one singular voice. So no, I don't take. I don't personally take the title as leader. I think, especially our uh, senior class, I think are all, all a whole bunch of leaders. So you were. You weren't always a pitcher. You played no. outfield. Yes, I played outfield when we had Carolyn uh, two back two years ago. Uh, last time we were at Penn State, we played for one of the uh, state games, not the championship. Uh, we didn't make it that far that year, but I was playing right field. So, no, this was my, act, my first year because we didn't have last season, just being the starting pitcher. Did you always feel you could be a good pitcher or did someone say you should pitch or how did you transition to a pitcher? Um, well, when I was about nine years old, I was sitting on my parents' bed and my dad said, Mary, do you want to be a pitcher? <laughs> I could have easily said no, but I said yes. So here I am sitting here today. Uh, um, I, I started pitching when I was about nine or ten years old. And um, going through travel, that's how I made it to different travel teams because they were always looking for a pitcher. I mean, I've always been a, di a diverse athlete, so I've played, I've played just about every position. Probably not catcher, but uh, I've played just about everywhere else. Uh, I haven't always claimed uh, pitching as my main position, but this year I had to take on that title. So um, that's who I was this year. Well, we all know your dad, yeah. uh, Bob. Mm -hmm. So he must have had that vision for you. He must have. He um, he too works in mysterious ways yes, sometimes. sometimes. Sometimes I don't know what he's out for, but I know he has the right idea in mind. Uh, he pushes my sister and I a lot. He um, our most infamous day of the year is January 2nd after Christmas break. That's when we start hitting the weights and we start working out really hard. And ever since that day, he's been pushing us. He's like, if you guys want to win, if you guys want to go far this year, you have to do this, this, and this. Being a former Division One athlete himself, yeah. he's, he does know what it takes. So he did push us hard to help us reach this goal. So I give a lot of credit to him for uh, my successes, my sister and I. Mm -hmm. Your father coached uh, football at Connorsville, mm -hmm. and uh, my son-in-law was one of his uh, players. Oh, really? Okay, and he could tell a lot of stories about your dad. How he coached. Oh yes, <laughs> he would. He he transfers some of that uh, football coaching mentality over to when he would uh, <laughs> coach Sophia and I um, over the summer. Oh, well, he hasn't so far this summer, but. Uh, previous summers, he would take us out on the field for 7 a.m. practices, and he'd have this big, loud whistle that he'd use, and he'd make us run agilities. So, yes, he brings that mentality. I just tell him, I said, I am not one of your football players. <laughs> So um, you should have knew when he built the house on the hill on a lot of land. He was running that hill. You were in trouble. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. We have to run that hill a lot with weighted vests. Always oh. got to push it to the next level, but oh, hey. No, your, your dad... He's, he's a leader. He's a leader. Mm -hmm. And it proves it in his business. He's yeah. a leader. Mm -hmm. He's very focused. He's yeah. very focused. I, I'm sure he yeah. kept you guys on a, on a regiment that uh, sometimes you probably didn't feel like doing it, but yeah. he stayed focused for you. That's one of the words on his uh, top vocabulary list. He always would uh, push focus, focus towards um, every different speech that he'd give because he is a little winded. Long-winded. That's where I get it from, probably. And it, he, um, yes, he loves. Yes, he does love to talk. <laughs> he talked about being focused, and every time you cross that white line, that f just focus is what we need to have. Now, now you're pitching today. So, what's your day like with him when you wake up in the morning? Is he? Is he have you getting ready 
for that day to pitch? Oh, it starts it starts before that. Before, that. before every <laughs> single game. I told him I don't want to ever eat steak again because he had to have the same he claims he's not superstitious, but we had to eat the same pre-game uh, meal for dinner the night before every game. We had to have steak and potatoes before uh, the night before every game. That was more towards the postseason, uh -huh. not so much the regular season. But man, I really don't want to eat steak for a long time. <laughs> Mary, in the postseason, uh, you didn't give up too many hits in uh, at all the games. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all the games. Uh, some shout outs there, too. Mm hmm. I did. Uh, my memory's a little bad, but how many shout outs did we have in the playoffs? Six. Six, six, six shout outs. Yeah, six postseason awesome. shout outs before the state championship. Mm hmm. Well, then how many summer. games did you have in the postseason? Seven. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seven. Yeah. It was, it was incredible. It was yeah. incredible. That's impressive. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. So to pitch six shutout games, your style of pitching, um, I don't think you overpower people. I don't, no. So are you, what is your style of pitching that makes you successful? My spin. It's a, it makes me successful. Um, well, I guess no one's gonna see me or like see me pitching right now. So I guess I can. Uh, it's you magician can, can reveal it's. You can go and give it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Your dad will let you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my uh, pitching. I'll text him right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> After but, yeah. My pitching coach Rick Shaheen has really worked with me on a few pitches. I'd have to drop a few because they weren't working anymore. They were bothering me physically. Um, but I throw a, a pitch uh, called a two-seamer. Um, it's I throw it like a fastball. I just grip it differently. And ever since I've been, I don't know, like 14, 15, I've been using it, and it has been my main go-to. And it's, it's like it's like a it's kind of like a drop curve almost, but it moves like crazy. And sometimes that has more speed than my fastball does. So when I throw that, girls are just missing because right at the end, it it moves away from them. And then more towards the postseason, I obtained a screwball. So that started working more on uh, batters because uh, eventually, after they realize I'm throwing outside, 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 they'll stand on top of the plate. So then I'd uh, squeeze them in with an inside pitch, and then they can can't get around on it because it's so tight on them. So I really worked back and forth on both sides of the plate. So Do you do scouting reports on the other teams, hitters? You kind of have an idea what they like uh, to hit? Kind they of, like hit. yeah. Uh, him and Aaron would tell me, uh, okay, this is the girl we're looking out for. This is you got to throw your best stuff to her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we had a few of those um, during some of the games. But uh, I didn't let that get to my head, really. Like, oh, this is their biggest hitter. You better watch out. Who decides what pitch you're going to throw, the catcher or do you? No. You know, I mean, the professional was just the catcher. No, who decided. that was uh, Mr. Hutter. He... Uh, he calls all the pitches, and which he thought was uh, very original. That uh, end the season, the state championship, I threw three fastballs to that mm -hmm. girl with the fly out to left field. I threw her three fastballs. I guess it just sounds nice. That's the one. That, that's the, the pitcher from the opposing team. That ever, is that the one you're talking about? No, because the last no, because we walked her for another girl to come up to bat. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about walking her? Well. Um, uh, I'm really not one to gloat, but uh, I faced her twice. Well, you can gloat today. I'm I right faced right. her twice and got her out twice. So they were, all the fans were yelling at me, let her hit, let her hit, let her hit. I let her hit twice. Yep. And once the game started getting tighter, it started getting to the end, it was in, um, it was probably better for us that we walked oh, in. Oh, sure. I agree. So, yeah, we didn't want a chance. That was some girls on base. Uh, it was definitely, oh, yeah. Well, that's the strategy part of the game. Yes. You know, and, and it's not just throwing and playing. It's the strategy part of it. So, when you throw the spin, you, or you call it the spin ball, right? Mm -hmm. um, that took time to develop, or you naturally had that pitch? Uh, well, it depends which one. The two-seamer I was talking about before, you have to pitch a certain way to throw it successfully. Luckily, um, I just I had that the way I grip the ball funny it's supposed to have a certain kind of rotation well my natural pitch didn't have that perfect rotation it had it's it's spun just kind of funny so um, 
like pitching coach Rick Shaheen was like, Mary, you should try this back a few years ago. So I tried it, and he's like, wow, Mary, look how good that worked. So I've been using that ever since. And that just, um, it's just natural that I grip a ball and I throw it that way. Did your arm get sore at the end of the game? Uh, yes, definitely. I usually uh, ha experience some problems the day after. I'm like, wow, that does not feel good. <laughs> but um, every single contraption, ice, heating, a massager, uh, cupping, cupping uh, stem. stem, physical therapy, anything I've tried to use just to keep my arm good this whole season. Because back in the beginning of the season when it was cold out for a long time, I couldn't, I had a hard time going full seven innings. Do you ever pitch a no hitter? Ever? I don't think so. Okay, it's hard to pitch a slow pitch, slow pitch <laughs> or a fast pitch softball no hitter. But I just curious. I almost said that Avonworth game. <sighs> I hate those. What What worries me more than even big hits are those little bloopers that go over yeah. the second baseman's <laughs> head. Well, that's what happened to us. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it was. Mm -hmm. You know, beggars can't be choosers. We're Whitby on state champions here, yeah. so. <laughs> The no hitter doesn't matter. Yeah, <laughs> no hitter isn't even doesn't even amount to any of these. So the record of of six shutouts. Mm -hmm. When you threw the next pitch, there was a hit. Did you? Did it bother you? No. No, not really. Oh, I mean, when they, I'm sorry. When, when they scored, when they scored, when, when they, yeah, I know yeah. what you meant. No, um, like I've been telling a lot of people, it's the state championship. Both teams on both sides are going to be good. I'm not expecting. I mean, the teams we played that I did shut out were also good, but this is the highest level that you can get. I wasn't expecting just to mow them all down. Mm -hmm. And plus, with all the adrenaline that everybody, that everybody was building up, I, I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to give up a whole bunch of runs, but I'm not going to say, oh, we're going to absolutely annihilate them either. So I didn't really let that get to me. I can testify that did not bother her one bit. I walked over to her after the first run, and she's like, we're fine. Like, we're going to go hit. We're going to score runs. Like, she was unbothered. She was very calm, for sure. What did I tell you when I first talked to you today? That look in yeah. your face when you come <laughs> off the field. I says, look out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. For sure. Have you ever been on a mound and your mind wandered? Is there something else? And you just like wonder, you think, what, well, what, when you know, I, every time I want I'd, ice cream at the end of the game, or no more steak <laughs> today. Or, no, I'd find like my happy place. Uh, one of the times it was, I felt really tight was the second Avonworth game uh, when we had to stop it at Norwin and then go over to Fox Chapel, and it was 3 nothing. I think there was a girl on base. It was getting really tight. I imagined that I was at the beach. Um, <laughs> I was just standing close to the water and smiling, and I was like, okay, I'm fine. And then yeah. I pitched. So, and she pitched great. And a lot of times, I like to talk to myself a lot. As you can tell, I'm long-winded. I, I do that when I'm just by myself, too. Uh, and so instead of doing that, I replace that with just singing in my head. That's like the calming effect that I use on myself when I'm batting and when I'm pitching. I always <laughs> sing something in my head, so I'm not driving myself nuts. Okay. Yeah. Next is Courtney. Mm -hmm. So Courtney, you play third? First base. First base. Mm -hmm. So playing first base, did you ever play any other positions? Yeah, I pretty much played everywhere besides pitcher and catcher. I'll let that up to Mary. But yeah, I can play pretty much anywhere. But first base, my college coach, she um, when I first committed, she was like, you'll probably be a first baseman. So that's kind of when I switched over. Because before that, I played a lot of third and outfield. But then I switched back to first. And I'm tall, so that helps a little bit, too. Yeah, you, have good, you have a good stretch. <laughs> yeah, <You> some days. <laughs> this third baseman can throw the ball a little crazy, but you can stretch. Yeah, I can attest to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I've thrown some balls over to Courtney, and I was like, and she somehow picked me up every time. <laughs> What's the hardest part playing first base? Um, I would say, like, the... Bad throws, like they're not. Okay. <laughs> this game, honestly, there wasn't many this year. Like our no. infield was pretty solid, so I didn't have to like clean up any bad throws. So no. this year they made it easy on me. I just had to stand there and catch the ball pretty much. So I didn't have to do much. But 
When there's a player on first base and you're and you're on first base, mm -hmm. do you ever talk to the other player? All the time. I'm yeah. a very, I'm a talker, so um, I talk to the first base coach, the umpires, the girl on first. I'll talk to everybody. So what do you say to the girl on first base? You know, have a good conversation. Yeah, wanna... we'll laugh. Like if something funny happens, say there's a Mary throws a wild pitch and it's like crazy. <laughs> They'll laugh and like just stuff like that. Or I'll be like, good hit. You know, if it, if yeah. it is a good hit, if someone has a home run, which. Barely happened. That didn't happen much because Mary didn't let it. But I was like, good hit or just stuff, stuff like that. Small talk. So, yeah. So, what kind of batting average did you have? If I'm being honest, I, I don't know. We were like 460. Yeah, 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 just below yeah. 500. Yeah. Yeah. Do you pride yourself being a better first baseman or a better hitter? Um, Probably a better hitter. I, I think defense. Because you hit fourth. Yeah, I right. did hit fourth, yeah. I'd say so. <laughs> she had ten home runs. Yeah. yeah. She had ten home runs. Yeah. She can hit a ball, really. Yeah. Not just any home run. <laughs> it'd go over two offenses. Yeah. yeah they're, they're usually... <laughs> she, yeah. she hasn't That's hit many no. wall scrapers. No. They're no. usually... They're no usually, So I like these little wall scraper, donkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a baseball guy. <laughs> we'll have to learn more about those yeah. some other day. But. So you're the power hitter then? Yeah, the I enjoy hitting. That's like my specialty, I would say. I also love defense. Like I'm a big fan of defense, but I think hitting is like my specialty. Like that's what I enjoy doing, and I have fun with it. So, yeah. so where do you get your strength at to hit the home run? Or is it bat speed, or is it strength? Um, well, my size helps me. I'm not a small girl. I'm tall. And Mr. Hutter, we've been lifting since probably seventh grade, so that has helped me tremendously. Like getting in the weight room, just getting stronger and faster. So that's definitely played a role. And then. And, well, I hit a lot so with my dad and just, like, fixing my swing. I have – bat speed's okay. It's not bad. But I would definitely say strength helps me a lot but in the weight room. And you're new to the Mount Pleasant area, aren't you? No. No? No. no I've always been here. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. I yeah, you, I've always been here. I thought you were. No. Right. My sister actually played on the 2017. Yeah. She won Did states. She? Yeah. 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 Yep. So there's oh, two state championships in the family. Yeah, hey. <laughs> we had to win. She couldn't be one up on me. Right. So <laughs> that was extra motivation for me because she won a whippy old in 2016 and then a state in 2017. So yeah. I was like, oh, she can't be one up on me. We have to win this. <laughs> so, so your coach alluded to this, uh, the bunt. Oh, yeah. So before you ask, answer that question, I'll ask you another one. Did, you, did he ever make you bunt, uh, ask you to bunt? No, not this season. No, not okay, at all. Well, I would like fake buns still, maybe, yeah. but no okay. buns. No. So when he tell the story about him walking up to you. So I walked up, and obviously there was a girl in first. I was a little nervous, and the other team's crowd was really like fired up and cheering. And there was like a delay. I don't even know what was happening, but he walked over to me, and I was like, oh, "Is he gonna have me bunt? Like, what's gonna go? What's gonna happen?" He looked at me. He's like. Donkeys don't bunt, they hit balls. And then I, like, I started laughing. I took like a deep breath, and I think what like the next pitch, I went ahead a single, and yeah, we scored. Yeah, so like it felt ball. really good. Did you wonder where the donkey come from? The, the the term donkey. Yeah, I never really knew where it came from, but it stuck, and yeah. we had fun with it. It was just a yeah. funny nickname for sure. So now that's your nickname. Yeah, I have quite donkey. a few, but donkey <laughs> donkey was towards the end of the season. Right. <laughs> what other nickname you have? Cordo. Cordo is Cordo. a big one. Cordo. That was like from seventh grade. Yep. Like yeah. my teachers call me that. Yep. Player, other like literally everybody calls me Cordo. But now it's donkey. The so. Donkey. <laughs> and yours, Mary. Mary Bear. Uh, Mary. I call her the bear. Um, yeah. I call her something along those lines. Mary Bear, the bear. Yep. And yours. Mm, I just get Haley. <laughs> or hey. Yeah. Hey. Or hey. Hey. Yeah. Or hey. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some funny ones. So, the season's going on for you. What do you think the hardest part of the season was for you? Um, probably adversity and distractions, like having to overcome all of that. Um, towards the end of the season, there was prom, graduation, the summer was coming. So I think we all had to just refocus and just play as a team and like not think about all the other stuff. Because going to college, that's a big deal. There's a lot of seniors or like going to the military like Lexi. We had to kind of forget about that and put that in the back burner because we know we had a goal to win a state championship and like that was our main goal. This is our last chance for the seniors. So we definitely... Um, had to come overcome adversity and like losing last year to COVID like this was our comeback season right. so yeah and there was a few injuries so do you have any good stories you want to tell about other than a donkey story <laughs> that one really sticks out to me for sure that was probably my favorite memory but um, what else what do you think 
Just like I'll tell one Courtney story. I don't want to cut her off. No, it's fine. She hit a home run in the first round of the states <laughs> against Bald Eagle area, and it was a mammoth <laughs> shot into the parking lot. I over the like, course. <laughs> put a dent in somebody's van. And, <laughs> like, they're pit- and Courtney's running yeah, the bases. This is a good one. Oh, she's all. You know, she's all jazzed up. Yeah, I get And then as she's go- touching home plate, I kind of made eye contact with their pitcher, and their pitcher goes, <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like, <laughs> so it was, that's yeah. my Courtney story. Yeah, so. that was funny. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's fine. That, that was a good one. That was a good one. Well, sure. listen, Jerry, we have five minutes left. What, what's your uh, big story since you followed the team? What do you remember? What's your memories of this team? Every game was great. <laughs> and, uh, sure. and there was, I mean, the only game that was uh, a nail breaker in the first inning only <laughs> yeah. was the, the, the playoff mm-hmm. game. I mean, the championship yeah. game. Yeah. And every other game, you just sat there and waited. It was going to happen. Yeah. And I believe, I, I know the one you were talking about, the home run you hit. I mean, it was, it was a rocket <laughs> shot. I that mean, the good. people from the other team that were in the stands with me, they were right. they just couldn't get over that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one fired me up a little bit. But that one felt did. good. <laughs> I'll bet For sure. it did. Mm-hmm. But you know, the support that uh, this team brought from their parents and relatives, mm-hmm. uh, the, it Incredible was just, family. just yep. really yeah. something to see and something to be a part mm-hmm. of. Uh, couldn't wait to be there. Yeah. It was fun. Oh, I know. His day would be, I said, Jerry, what are you doing today? I'm going to the game. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to the game. Then I didn't ask anymore. <laughs> so he's going to the he's game. He's going to go to the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So a couple minutes left. Anybody have any last, uh, last word? we got about three minutes left. Uh, this show went fast, and I knew it would. Well, it's an hour. Right? We, yeah. we, 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 I think we covered a lot. Uh, yeah. The girls got a chance to... You know, say what they you know they get to know the girls a little bit more. Um, I, I think I'll tell you a couple quick. I mean, winning state championship is the ultimate thing for you know high school sports. That's what we talk about. These girls were younger. Um, you know, the, all the way through. You know, hey, and we didn't get there two years ago, but that's that was the goal. That's what we talked about: winning a Whippeo, winning a state. Um, I I really think. One of the things that was uh, a high, you know, winning the WPL championship down at Cal U and the way we did it, um, I think that was probably the second best memory, you know, to winning the state championship. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just we just came out and it was just an explosion of doubles and balls off the wall and, yeah. I mean, the, the final score was 15 nothing. I mean, that's a district championship game, you know, and these girls really showed that, I mean, their bats were just. You know, well, we had another shot out. Yeah. We had another shot out. Yeah, you know, yeah. But, I mean, one run. But, yeah, I mean, one run. But to show the dedication and the hard work of, of all of our girls, you know, that was kind of like the shining, you know, thing with the 15 nothing with everybody, you know. And they're still, they're still old timers you talk to when they didn't have state championships. They said, well, did you win the Whippeal? You know, they still ask yeah. you, did you win yeah. the Whippeal? Did you win the Whippeal? Well, we can say we won the Whippeal. Well, look, I think uh, I was looking forward to the show. I was, um, too. And I know Jerry was, yep. too. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only is it fun to hear the stories, but it's, it's always a pleasure to meet high school kids and athletes, like yeah. especially you three and all the rest of the team we talked about. Um, you learn so much, and you're so proud of everybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good atmosphere here in Mount Pleasant, and you help create a, a winning you. tradition along with these girls. So. Um, so Jerry? I, I want to wish the girls a lot of success in their college careers. Mm-hmm. Thank, you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bring Jerry. it back to Mount Pleasant. Well, we, <laughs> we may have to do a road trip. We'll do a show though. We'll combine uh, it. <laughs> I think we're five hours, five and a half, and an hour. Right? Uh, oh hey, we might yeah, you for a Six or so. Oh, is it six? Yeah, I'm in okay. Mind. Well, I hope you enjoyed the show today, and I hope you got to know the team a little bit better and their championship run this year. So for Jerry, Girls, and the Coach, this is Jeff saying thanks for watching and listening to the Jeff and Jerry Show, and we'll see you next time.